Today we're gonna to address two of the most frequently asked questions I get about Honda lawnmowers. Number one, how do you get the dang carburetor off? Number two, how do you get the pilot screw jet out? Well, to be fair, there's only two bolts holding on the carburetor, but this particular model is pretty tricky. Not to mention all the gaskets you gotta put in order. Now, before y'all start firing off comments, this video only applies to Honda GCV 160 with auto choke, with manual throttle. That being said, if you've got a GCV 135 or a GCV 190 or a fixed throttle, thanks for playing. Like always, go ahead and shut off the valve to the fuel and unplug that spark plug. Go ahead and remove that air filter box and the air filter. And if you could find your 10 millimeter socket, you're gonna need it. Go ahead and take off those bolts, those only two bolts that I mentioned earlier. And go ahead and remove the last bolt that's holding on the carburetor plate assembly. And she's gonna come all the way tumbling down, folks. Not one of Honda's best designs, and you'll see exactly what I mean later in the video. All right, once you got her all down, go ahead and remove the fuel line. The last two things holding on the carburetor is the governor link and the governor return spring. Now, she don't come out too easy, but you're gonna have to give her a little twist and a little nudge and she'll come right out. You'll figure it out. And FYI, the governor link assembly does have a bend in it, so don't think that you damaged it. It comes from the factory like that. This is optional. Personally, I like to make sure everything's out of the way so it's not bothering me or in my vision, it's just a better comfortable feel. Plus, I like to hang up the plate assembly, so that's out of the way too. Just overall better idea what you're looking at and what you're working on in general. Now that we got the carburetor off, we could address the second most frequently asked question, and that is the Pesty Pilot Jet Screw. The Phillips head on top, the bigger one. Uh, multiple people have told me they can't get it out or they stripped it out or for whatever reason, they can't get it out and I, I, I'm here to help. So after looking it over, I could only think of a couple reasons what might keeping you or what's avoiding you from getting this screw out. The first thing is the throttle stop screw. You might not have a good angle at it. So we wanna take that out or move it out the way. You got a couple options. A, Grab yourself a paint pen or a Sharpie and mark the threads. This way, when you go to reinstall it, you know where to stop or how far to go. Or B, simply count the threads. Simplest way possible. Now that we determined where to reinstall it, go ahead and remove the throttle stop screw. Take it all the way out. Just be sure not to lose that spring. Now that you got that little guy out the way, you should have a clear shot at getting that pilot screw out. As long as you're using a number two Phillips head screwdriver, you shouldn't have any problems. And as always, righty tighty, lefty loosey, and she's out. Go ahead and grab some carburetor cleaner and let's clean this jet out while we have access to it. If you're not familiar with this little carburetor, the transports on these are very, very tiny and they give a lot of headache to people that I've come to learn. So. Anytime you got a chance to clean out that carburetor, do it. All right, it's time to reinstall. Go ahead and reinstall the Pilot Jet screw access port. And don't forget the throttle stop screw. And FYI, if you get a little wild with this and forget where you had or where you set it, Honda recommends 1700 RPMs for idle. It's time to reinstall, and this is where it gets fun. So you know I mentioned earlier how I said this isn't the best design and here's why. And guys, if you take anything away from this video, please, please, please take my advice on this. Install these. They're studs. They're gonna help you reassemble the carburetor the easy way. You could buy these on Amazon. They're about $12. Or you could get some cheap Harbor Freight bolts that come in a variety pack. The size is M6 by one. Go ahead and cut the head off. Line her up and stick them together. Grind her down a bit so she's smooth and you're welcome. All right, so if you bought an OEM part, it's gonna come with three gaskets. 
and I believe, oh, I'm sorry, four gaskets, and you're gonna reuse one of them. There's five total. First up, insulator gasket. Second, thermal wax assembly. All right, time out. So if you have this type of air guide, which is a gasket or a fabric or soft material, you can see it's very flimsy. This was found on later models. If you have this type, you do not need these two gaskets. The air guide itself replaced these two gaskets so you could pitch it. Now on the flip side, if you have a metal air guide like the one seen here, you will need these two gaskets. So once again, if you have a metal air guide like this, you will need these two gaskets. So you will have to take the air guide back off and I'll show you the order that it goes in. All right, just like the other one, we're gonna start off with the insulator gasket, then the insulator or the carburetor insulator itself. You'll notice on this one, it doesn't have the auto choke on it. That's why it looks a little different, but it's just, it acts as the same function. Then we're gonna add our first air gasket because we have a metal air guide. Next up, go ahead and install the metal air guide itself, followed by the second air guide gasket. And finally, the carburetor assembly itself. Now everything after this step is the same, so let's do a quick review. Just remember, if you have a soft air guide, that is your gasket, no gaskets needed. If you have a metal air guide, you will need both air gaskets. Now that you determine which air guide you have, we can go ahead and move forward. The next thing is to install the carburetor assembly. On top of the carburetor, there's two holes for the governor link and the governor return spring. The larger hole is for the metal link and the return spring is for the return spring. Now, keep in mind, it's very important to make sure that the top of the carburetor, all the butterfly valves are moving freely. The auto choke opens and closes the valve. The links are moving back and forth. Everything should move harmonically. And lastly, the carburetor gasket. Now don't be fooled, there's gonna be another one on the opposite side of the carburetor metal plate, which I'll show you here in a second. All right, go ahead and reinstall the carburetor metal plate assembly. And a little pro tip for you, when you go to install the plate assembly, leave this bolt loose. This holds on the plate assembly as a whole. You don't wanna tighten it down to the very end. So leave it just a little bit loose. Now, key notes here, you need to make sure you have the fuel valve hooked up, the stop switch hooked up, and the breather tube hooked up. That should be the only thing that is involved in this assembly. And keep in mind, the breather tube is hooked up or located on the back of the air filter box. And yes, we have come to the last gasket, the carburetor gasket. This is on the opposite side of the metal plate assembly. All right, last thing to install is the air filter box or the air filter housing plate. So we get to remove our metal studs one at a time. So remove, only remove one at a time. So basically remove one, install one, remove one, install one. Once you have everything tightened down, go ahead and install the air filter and the air filter cover and you're done. Thanks for watching, hope this helps.